Live in Western Oregon, this is NBC 16 News at 11. President Trump today downplayed concerns for his son over that 2016 meeting at Trump Tower with Russians to get dirt on Hillary Clinton. Good evening and thanks for joining us on NBC 16 at 11. Filling in, I'm Alexis Thrower. The president went on a Twitter tirade saying the meeting was totally legal and once again calling the media the enemy of the people which fabricates fake news. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has our story tonight from Washington. President Trump dismissing concerns that Donald Trump Jr. will get ensnared in the Russia election investigation after participating in that 2016 meeting with a Kremlin-linked lawyer. The president tweeting, this was a meeting to get information on an opponent, totally legal and done all the time in politics, and it went nowhere. I did not know about it. The question is, how would it be illegal? I mean, the, the real question here is, would a meeting of that nature uh, constitute a violation, the meeting itself constitute a violation of the law? The president had previously dictated a statement that the meeting was about a Russian adoption program. He's chosen to say to protect himself. I didn't know about this, but my son did, and the others who attended the meeting, they, they knew what it was. It was fake news, you're right. <laughs> so. Campaigning for Ohio Republican Troy Balderson, the president again blasted the media. And in a Twitter storm Sunday writing, the fake news hates me, saying that they are the enemy of the people only because they know it's true. His team tried to clarify that. It really refers to those who aren't always telling the truth and who are giving emotion over information. The president's lawyer says Mr. Trump may still be interviewed by special counsel Robert Mueller, but says his legal team is advising against it. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. And on Twitter, the president again attacked the Mueller investigation, calling it the most one-sided witch hunt in the history of our country. Iran received five new ATR-72-600 aircraft today. That comes one day before the U.S. reimposes sanctions on the country, according to the National Airliner. Manufacturer ATR is co-owned by France's Airbus and Italy's Leonardo. The aircrafts were flown to Tehran from Toulouse, France. The delivery was facilitated by negotiations with French and Italian officials, according to Iranian Air Director General Farzana Sharafafi. Federal aid and help from across the globe are on the way this week for crews battling the California fires. The White House has just approved a disaster declaration for Shasta County, where the car fire is continuing to burn through homes and property. Meanwhile, the Mendocino Complex fire has exploded to nearly 230,000 acres. Meanwhile, the Ferguson fire burning near Yosemite has claimed another fire-related death. Kim Hutchison has a closer look. He died protecting people he never met their homes, their most cherished possessions. A moving tribute to the latest victim of the more than 17 monstrous fires blazing out of control in California. Captain Brian Hughes was part of an elite group of hotshots battling the Ferguson fire near Yosemite. This weekend, that three-week-old fire moved into the park, forcing rangers and employees to evacuate during peak season. We've had fires before, we've had evacuations before, but to have this extended period of just this inversion layer of just hazardous, unbreathable air, it, it takes its toll. Meanwhile, north of San Francisco, a massive pair of fires called the Mendocino Complex fires have exploded in size. This has been a, a challenging uh, and deadly fire season just in the month of July. Farther north in Shasta County, people near the car fire began returning to their homes. The fire there has killed seven people and destroyed more than 1,000 structures. And this has been the largest and most destructive fire in Shasta County history, and I believe about the sixth in California. On Sunday, the White House approved a disaster declaration for Shasta County, fast-tracking federal aid. Help is also pouring in from all over the world. We're bringing resources in, as was said, from a number of different states, uh, two countries. Firefighters from New Zealand and Australia will be arriving uh, in Reading on Monday. I'm Kim Hutcherson reporting. Turning to a fire that's burning in Douglas County, level three evacuations are still in place for residents leaving in the, living in the Elk Creek area for the South Umpqua Complex fire. Fire crews say the Columbus fire showed a little growth over the weekend. Miles and Sugar Pine fires combined in the Hawk Creek drainage last week. 
Overall, the South Umpqua Complex fire is burning just over 23,000 acres with 18% containment. Just over 1,000 firefighters are working on the fires. Fire crews continue to make progress containing a large wildfire burning near Dufer. The South Valley fire is now 40% contained. Moderate temperatures and strong northwest winds are affecting the fire today. Just over 600 firefighters are fighting the blaze right now. Crews estimate full containment of the South Valley fire by Thursday. And on to your first look at weather. We take a live look outside with Sky Cam 16. We have Ellen Minnie joining us in the Weather Center. What's the weather looking like, Ellen? Good evening, everybody. We are really in for a really hot, really hazy week ahead of us in both the Willamette Valley and the Umpqua Valleys. So here's a look at our power planner for the Willamette Valley tomorrow. We hit a high of 92 degrees right around 5 p.m. All those clouds you see on the power planner, that's the haze that's going to settle over the valley. It's already settled over Sunday um, afternoon. It's going to continue throughout the week pretty much. Taking a look at our seven-day forecast for Eugene Springfield, you can definitely see that hanging around until about Thursday. It's going to be quite hot as well. We do hit 100 degrees both Wednesday and Thursday. These might these temperatures might shift around a little bit, but this is pretty much what we're going to see. The good news, however, is that by Friday, it looks like this heat wave does start to taper off and this uh, haze clears out as well, so we don't have to deal with it forever. But I do have some tips if you uh, are looking for ways to beat the heat, stay in the shade, stay in the air conditioning, places like libraries, movie theaters, uh, drink a lot of water, and check on friends and family as well if they don't have air conditioning. So those are just some tips. I'll break this down more in my full forecast coming up very soon. It's August, and for, far, for a farm in Harrisburg, that means peaches. Cedaring Orchards recently opened the doors to its oldest Suncrest you pick field, and you're invited to come pick peaches off their trees from the 1960s while they last. You can either buy fruit or pick it yourself at the 200-acre farm. As we're told, this season's weather has had a rather positive impact on peaches. It's, it's been hot. It's been dry. Um, it's really helped the peaches actually really ripen up and sugar up nicely. Um, and it's not too hot um, in the morning. So when you want to come and you want to pick peaches in the morning, come on out. Uh, 60 degrees out here, not too bad. You pick season for peaches will last for about a month. For more information about the farm or to learn about upcoming events, visit their Facebook page at Dietering Orchards. A local business who prides itself on being zero waste is making sure the packaging from its products don't end up in the landfill. Mountain Rose Herbs in Eugene was the first company in Oregon to receive a zero waste facility certification from Green Business Certification Inc. Their director of sustainability says the international need for recycled materials has dwindled, leading to Lane County no longer accepting plastic recyclables. So today they invited their customers to drop off their used packaging and are taking it upon themselves to make sure it can be recycled. Lane County residents are no longer allowed to put plastic packaging in their curbside recycling. A lot of stuff has been going to the landfill and we feel that it's really important for our customers to have an alternative. Mountain Rose Herbs will be sending the materials to a local recycling facility. They believe it can be used to make plastic lumber for furniture. The Oregon Festival of American Music began this month, bringing musicians from all over the world together to perform at the Shed Institute. Our reporter Alex Hassenstab got a backstage look at rehearsal for tonight's jazz party, talking to the musicians about the music style they've all fallen in love with. I fell in love with jazz from the, from the time I was a toddler. From the age of four, I started playing piano and then flute, and then I switched to the bass when I was a teenager. My father always played music and jazz, so it's always been in my life. Uh, I love the sound, I love improvisation, and playing with great musicians, so it's, it's a joy. It's really like a, a big extended family, and we just get together and we the chemistry is always still there. We make some music together. Three words, pat your foot. So when you come to a jazz gig, you can't help but pat your foot like it's what they're playing right now. Now if you can't feel that, then you might be dead. You gotta check your pulse and make sure you're living. It's uh, a wonderful festival here in Eugene, Oregon. I've had a ball here. 
It's well worth attending and uh, I love it. Well, I like the intimacy of the shed. It's a homecoming. You play with all the great people and then you find all this great local talent here too. There's really nothing like it that I've seen anywhere in the country. The festival is continuing through next Saturday the 11th. You can go online to theshed.org for the full schedule and to buy tickets. And if you see breaking news, give us a call at 541-393-KMTR, that's 5687, or send an email to newsdesk at kmtr.com. Good evening, everyone. Well, there's no really other way to put it. We have a rough week ahead of us, so we have a heat wave moving into both the Willamette Valley and the Umpqua Valley. We also have a ton of smoke along the way as well. Basically a week of a lot of hot weather and a lot of smoke as well. So today's high is 86 degrees in Eugene, similar in Roseburg on the coast, a little bit cooler. It's definitely going to heat up from what we've seen today. This is just the calm before the storm, so to speak. We've already seen haze moving into the Willamette Valley. Um, that's going to continue on. So taking a look at our power planner for Monday. We have a high of 92 degrees tomorrow hitting right around 5 p.m. Uh, those clouds you see that's representing all of the haze and the smoke that's settling over the valleys. Um, we're just going to see that all day long on Monday and until about Thursday um, in the Willamette Valley. Now it's also going to be hot as well as I mentioned so there's a couple of tips I want to share with you guys. Uh, you know it's going to we might even see 100 degrees in the Willamette Valley so uh, try to avoid strenuous activity in peak heat times 12 to 7 p.m. Stay in the shade try to get to the air conditioning the library the movie theater and the mall drink a lot of water and if you have friends and family who may not have access to air conditioning or who might have um, health concerns maybe check on them as well just because this hot weather can really affect people. So central coast weather tomorrow looking a lot better than the inland valleys. We have a high of 63 degrees in Florence no sign of haze or smoke there. Rather we do have um, clouds in the morning and then clear skies in the afternoon. Winds are relatively light as well. South Coast, similar situation, uh, less cloudy than the Central Coast, high of 70 degrees in North Bend. Winds are light. Seven day forecast for the Oregon coast looks absolutely gorgeous over there. Basically temperatures in the mid 60s to high 60s all week long, partly cloudy skies. So definitely if you do have a day off or something like that, head to the coast to escape the smoke. Uh, no sign of it there. In the Umpqua Valley, we see a lot of heat and a lot of haze tomorrow. High of 94 degrees in Roseburg. Light winds, but just that nasty smoke we're seeing settling over the valley. Taking a look at our seven day forecast, you can see it heats up as well. Temperatures get up to 99 degrees on Thursday. I would also not be shocked if we see these temperatures change. Uh, I know in some areas around Roseburg, we might even see 101. So we're going to keep an eye on these. Don't be surprised, though, if they go up. You'll see that about Tuesday through Wednesday, uh, Thursday, I should say, that's our smokiest days or haziest days. After that, thankfully, it looks like it does start to get a little bit better. That heat's going to stick around for a while, but that smoke does burn off as we get into next weekend. Land at pass weather, clearing clouds, hazy skies, 78 degrees tomorrow, relatively light winds. Central Oregon, haze again, bend hits 90 degrees. Um, beyond all that haze is some sunshine, but you're not going to be able to see it that well. And then finally, the Willamette Valley, haze and smoke tomorrow. It's going to be hot, 92 degrees. And then taking a look at our seven-day forecast, you can see that haze continues until just about Friday. It looks like we're going to hit 100 Wednesday and Thursday. Thankfully, though, we do start to cool down by the time we get to Friday. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now. That's your look at weather. Have a great evening. Thanks again, Ellen. And now you can track the weather conditions through your neighborhood by at any time by downloading our NBC 16 app. Also be sure to check out our website and Facebook for interactive radars and the latest information. Next on NBC 16, find out how a group of mothers in North Carolina rallied together to support one another while breastfeeding. News at 11. And welcome back. Almost 100 moms gather together in a unique show of support in Wilmington, North Carolina. It's all part of an international movement called the Global Latch On. Ben Smart has more. This crowd of moms and their babies Three, two, 
Today, breaking a local breastfeeding record in Wilmington. Right at 1030, we'll have a countdown and we, uh, everyone will latch their baby all at the same time. We'll take a count. Last year, 76 moms and this year, 94 nursing mothers, including Stephanie Bell and her one month old daughter. I love that we can see how many women are united in the same purpose and it just makes you feel like um, you have a tribe and that there are people out there who are going to support you and because breastfeeding is really hard. Challenges to breastfeeding. Moms and babies are my love. That certified lactation consultant Norma Escobar helps women overcome. About 25% of women in the U.S. have to return to work within two weeks after giving birth. So it's very difficult to um, establish and maintain breastfeeding in those situations. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends mothers exclusively breastfeed babies for the first six months of their life. No other food or drink, including water. Um, babies that are breastfed have lower um, respiratory in infections. They have lower gastrointestinal infections. They have lower rates of cancer and diabetes and obesity. Benefits for baby, but also for mom. So they have less chances of getting things like breast cancer and ovarian cancer and diabetes, and they, they are able to maintain their, their weight. A healthy community supporting each other through motherhood. Um, it feels like a village of mamas who support each other through um, all of the struggles of just nursing your baby. After the main event, a smaller mini latch on where children learned about the importance of breastfeeding using dolls. My daughter, that I, my firstborn, now likes to nurse her dolls because she mimics me nursing my, my infant son now. And so allowing them to breastfeed their dolls and feel still a part of the journey um, is really important. And we hope I hope that my grandchildren are breastfed. A nurturing and life-sustaining bond between a mom and her baby. What's even better than seeing the women out there, seeing the fathers out there supporting them. Great job, dads. But when we come back, we will have sports with Hayden Herrera right after the break.